Please welcome Kiefer Williams. Hello, Montgomery School. My name is Kiefer Williams. My chapel is about life lessons I've learned from fishing. Being out on the water has given me a few different perspectives on life, and I'll be sharing some of them with you today. My family has a very long history of fishing, going back to my great-great-grandfather as far as I know. And his love for fishing has been passed down from generation to generation. When I was younger, I watched my dad and older brother fish, and I didn't really like it at first. But as I did it more, I saw that there were deeper meanings to it, and I learned to love it. Lesson one, patience is key. Um, one of the reasons I didn't enjoy fishing when I was little was because I wasn't being patient. I, I always kept wondering when the fish would bite, and I couldn't stand waiting so long. But I learned that with patience comes reward, which ties in a lot with the real world, such as waiting for the weekend or a holiday to come, studying for a test and waiting for a grade, or even just waiting in line. With patience usually comes reward, but we don't always win big, so we need to stay optimistic and wait. Here's a video um, representing how patience can pay off. You might also realize later that this video ties with a lot of the other lessons. If you want to move, we can move it. Ready? Feels good. Feels like a keeper. It feels so great to be hooked right up right now. I mean, we really need this one. Oh, sorry. I gotta stay on top of him, bro. Bobby, get ready. Turn, 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 Bobby, turn. Come on, fish, come to Bobby. He's bigger than we think. Look at the tip. Bobby, remember, there's it's shallow water, so if he wants to go, let him go, you know what I'm saying? Chad, you wanna hop on here for a minute? Yeah, okay. More a little bit. That's good. I can see colors. There he comes. It's a low water. There he is, there he is. It's a big one. This thing's a slob. No, no, no. Come on. Get me the other door. Get me the other door. Go. Hey. Got him. Get him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. On the left. I'm going to kill him. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Finally, we got. Lesson two persistence. As I just mentioned, we don't always win big, and that's one of the key lessons I've learned from fishing. But we have to keep fighting and persisting to try and increase the odds of success. Over the summer, my family and some, family and some of our family friends went out fishing on a boat. At first, nobody was really catching much, but suddenly, the daddy, uh, the dad of the other family, started to catch several fish. I kept trying and trying, but I started to I started to question what I was doing wrong, and I felt like I just couldn't catch anything that day. Then, out of nowhere, I got a bite. I reeled it in, and I caught a very small dogfish, which is kind of like a small shark. But I was still I was still pretty happy because I know I've had worse days when I didn't catch anything. But it's from times like these that I that I learned not to compare myself to others. Lesson three, competitiveness. Fishing can be competitive, but no matter what, don't compare yourself to others. No matter how well you prepare your bait, how well you tie your rigs, or how good of a boat you have, you need luck. Never bring yourself down because someone is better or had more luck than you did. It's important to remember that some level of competition is healthy, though. It pushes you and can encourage you to try harder. For an example of competition in fishing, if you've ever been out on a party fishing boat, um, they sometimes have a wager where everyone on the boat puts in a tiny bit of money, and whoever catches the most or biggest fish, they, um, they get the whole prize pool. If you win, you get to feel proud of yourself. However, even if you lose, these types of competitions make you feel happy for the success of others, because you get to share an experience with everyone while you fish. 
Lesson four, community. In line with what was just mentioned, you share an experience with everyone while you fish. Oftentimes when you go out fishing, you aren't, you aren't always alone. There tends to be a, another person or two in the surrounding area, and they, and they sometimes want to be a part of the experience. They often talk to you, ask questions, and they might just be there to cheer you on. Whether you know the person or not, it's encouraging to know that someone is there to help and see you succeed. Other examples can be if you walk into a bait and tackle shop, if you're at a marina, or even if you're just at a fishing spot. Someone there is usually eager to share what fishing locations they've had success with or what type of bait the, the fish were biting on. After all, there's no success if you can't share it. This, le this lesson helps me realize that we, need to, that we need to create connections like this every day because through, connect through communication similar to this, we create friendships and, and very important bonds. Lesson five, bonding. Fishing is a great way of bonding, especially among my family. As mentioned earlier in my chapel, I didn't enjoy fishing when I was little. But from watching my dad and brother successfully catch fish and the happiness that it brought, I started to go fishing with them and, try, and, and I tried to understand it. Eventually, I began to love it as well. Spending time fishing was, uh, has helped create a core part of our relationship, bringing us closer together. With busy schedules for both school or work, it's hard to really get together and have, and have meaningful or even just fun conversations. So fishing is a great way to just get together, relax, and connect. Take, the takeaway from this lesson is that it's not what you're doing, but who you're doing it with. Lesson six, take a look around. It's always great to relax, and fishing is, is an amazing way to do it. A quote from author Harry Middleton states, fishing is not an escape from life, but often a deeper immersion into it. Being around the waves, being on a boat, or even just being on the sand gives you so much clarity and allows you to just forget about all the serious topics in the world for a while. It teaches, you, it teaches you to just be still and focus on what's going on in front of you. Fishing has a calming effect, eases anxiety, and improves mental and physical health. I know that almost every time we go on a fishing trip, I come back more calm, relaxed, and I always get a good night's sleep. I've learned through fishing that it's important to take a second, no matter where you are, to just, look, to just take in the surroundings and live in the moment. That's the quote. In conclusion, fishing has played a very important role in my life and it's taught me many lessons that I can use in my, in my future. To recap some of the lessons, patience, can, uh, patience, can teach you to, um, patience is needed to develop a healthy attitude and can help you reach future goals. Persistence can, can teach you to keep fighting no matter what and to never give up. A competitive spirit helps push and improve yourself while not comparing yourself to others. But most importantly, it's the bonds you create that can last a lifetime. Um, fishing has always been a great part of my life since it is an activity that my family has participated in for many years. It increases positive interactions between family members, friends, and community. I hope that this chapel has inspired you to take up fishing as well. Thank you for listening. the ground. 
Green River. 